Well, hi, Adam Bazaljad here, founder of Scratch Golf Academy. Today's subject, how to square the club face consistently at impact, obviously a critical skill. If you can't do that, you're not gonna be a particularly a good player. We'll talk about that, it's pretty obvious what it is, but I'll show you two things that I think are very, very much undertaught or certainly underemphasized in the whole process of that. And of course, we'll look at a couple of pros and give you drills as well. Well, just a quick message if you're new to the channel or perhaps you've watched the videos but never subscribed, we'd really appreciate it if you'd hit that red subscribe button down there. It helps us build some momentum at the channel and also hit the little bell there. That way you'll be notified every time you have another free instruction video coming your way. All right, let's talk about squaring this club face then. Well, listen, everybody knows that's aimed left and that's aimed right. And for, to be honest with you, most people struggle. Let's talk right-handed golfers with the open face and hitting it right. So we'll camp on that a little bit today. But if you're going to square the club face up quickly, to me, number one pitfall of these two, the, the first thing people conceptualize wrongly is they think they've got to really whip the club to get it closed, especially if they have been struggling to get it closed and you don't. Now, we'll get into that a little bit more as the video goes along, but let me just tell you, if you can't keep the club pretty stable right through impact, if that club is active and flipping around, I don't care what you do, you will not be consistent squaring the club face up. So let's have a look at a pro, and then we'll get back out here and we'll try to solve this. So I've picked two players, uh, Dustin Johnson on the left, John Rahm on the right, that certainly accentuate this and give it a good visual, but uh, there's no disputing this is the way to hit the ball. So in they come, and look at that. Let's go maybe, there's the ball right about there. I mean, you just look how stable that lead arm club shaft relationship is, and just how solid the back of that lead hand is. You are gonna hit a lot of repeatable shots if you do that. John Rahm, of course, having a lot of success. Wonderful right there for a good several inches past the ball. That club shaft is rock solid. Okay. So let's camp on this for just a moment. Then we'll talk about the other pitfall and how I think you have effectively can square the club face up. Well, listen, take something short like a nine iron, that's what I have here, and hit some little shots. And as you come into impact, you know, this club's moving with a lot of speed. It's not gonna stay stable all by itself. I mean, I'm, I'm a believer in reasonable grip pressure, but if you don't firm up some at impact, you're not gonna control that club shaft. Certainly, hey, there's other factors, the way you use your body, but try this drill, and I think this will help you. So press with your right arm, your trail arm, push until you feel some stability in your arms. In other words, you couldn't have your arms pulled apart easily and you can feel some forward pressure in your, in your club shaft. Just hit a little shot like that. I hit that fat, but I like the way that felt with my arms and club through the ball. Interestingly enough, I tell people to do that often in golf lessons. You know, hit us a little shot, I'll demonstrate it. Let's have the arms nice and stable in the club right here, just a little punch shot. Almost invariably, that player whacks one, the club's just totally out of control up by their shirt collar. Rarely do they even notice that. That's how much people get enticed by the golf ball. All they're doing is looking at the shot and I'll say, you know, what do you think about your finish? Uh, they don't even know about it. So pay attention. If you're going to do this drill, let me do one more. Try not to hit this one fat. There you go. Pay attention to your finish do you have control over the club? If you have control over it there, you've probably done it correctly at impact. So getting back to our purposes here of squaring the club, and again, I said at the beginning, most people tend to leave it open and hit slices. You don't want that. And by the way, if I come nearer the camera, when you start getting the shaft firm and the hands forward, that can even open the club face more. So the simple cure is turn the face like that. Don't whip the face. Try it yourself. Push the hands forward. You can do it right up here in front of you turn the face to the ground more. Now, grip can make a difference. There are some grips would probably feel, you know, more comfortable for you when you do this. That's, again, a separate issue. You can fiddle with that, but play with it a little bit like that. That's how you square the club face up. Let's have a look at a great player in action, then we'll get up, get back out here and try that drill. So let's look at Tiger from a couple of angles. Diagonal, I really like this angle. You'll see how the back of that glove will really turn down as he's getting ready to hit this ball really de-lofting it there. And again, that tilts the loft off the face, but it effectively squares the club face up while still staying nice and stable through impact. Watch it from here. 
and the camera's wobbling around a bit, but watch that lead wrist. Watch it turn down. See, it's less lofted effectively at impact than it would have been at address. And watch how quickly, even though the shaft is super stable, watch how quickly or early, if you like, you can begin to see knuckles of his glove under that right forearm without a big flip of the club. That's because he's twisting it under and twisting the loft of the golf club uh, off as he goes through impact. By the way, I have a free course, three-part video course, absolutely free on Solid Strike Formula. You get a lot of details about these things. It's just down there in the description box. Feel free to go down and pick it up. All right, so here's our drill. We basically set it up right before we went to that piece with the pro there. And that is, if you're gonna feel something, you gotta be familiar with what it's like and create a feel from it. So do this right in front of you. Push the handle forward, there it's stable, and turn the face in there and then you've got the feel. So what we're going to do is we're going to come over here, we're going to hit a couple of little shots first, or one little shot I'll hit, and I'm going to preset and turn the face. The loft will be less on the club. Little tiny backswing and punch one out there. Front edge of the club caught on the ground a little bit because, because it wasn't a great swing, but because I had the face turned in and play around with that idea for a little bit. Stage two of the drill. Start from a familiarize yourself with the feel, then start from a neutral position, then try to recreate that feel at impact. Now, two things when you work on this drill or these drills in general that I would start to play around with once you feel like you've got reasonable consistency with them. In other words, dial it in to what you really want. Number one, club face. So I would hit some shots. Let's say I've graduated to the point I've got a normal setup and I'm kind of de-lofting the club at impact. I would hit a few shots. I'll hit one here. Now that shot there, nice firm club, that had a little low draw on it there. I deliberately overdid it a little bit. Don't make the mistake of always trying to hit a neutral shot, trying to hit a perfect shot, thinking that gets you good. Skill is what makes you good. Develop it by mixing and matching. So overdo the hook a little bit, do a few where you don't quite turn the face as much and see if you can discover a feel that works for you so that you can basically be good at this variable. The other thing you wanna do the other thing I think I'd vary a little bit, I have a tendency in my swing to get a little bit too rigid and stiff with my arms. So this is this, this set of drills here is really agitating that if you like. But hey, listen, you don't have to be a wooden soldier and stiff at a dress. You don't want to be too stiff there. You do want a little bit of loading of the golf club. It's down here where that club's moving at its quickest. It's interacting with the ball and the turf. That's where you've got to firm up. So play around with it till you feel like you can get a manageable amount of pressure, but firm it up a little bit at impact. If you can stabilize the club and you know how to square it and you, ain't, uh, you earn it by playing around on the range till you've got that skill, you will never have a, a, a great problem being reasonably good, being consistent at squaring the club face at impact. Hope that helps you with how to square the club face consistently at impact. If you like the video, please hit the thumbs up button. Helps us again build some momentum at the channel. Want to keep bringing you content. I hope this is helpful to you. It's not rocket science. You can learn to do it. Just hearing about it may not make you a skilled player, but get out there, play with these two principles. I believe you can square that up pretty consistently at impact if you do these things.